Um, again, this is the team that's representing the Women's Business Development Center, Maura Mitchell, Felicitas, Yesenia, and I think Jessie is out this week, so she won't be joining us. So today we're going to use a question to break the ice. We're going to dus discuss progress on our SMART six-month goal and take a survey. Um, we're going to have a subject matter expert come to talk about negotiations and then discuss next steps. This is the end of our six-month sponsored by Huntington Bank, but we do have another six month program starting up that's sponsor sponsored by Wintrust. So I'll talk a little bit more about that in the second half today. So welcome everyone. Um, I I'm just want more... to- Sorry to interrupt. No. One person said the link isn't working for them. I'm wondering if it would be helpful because it seems strange that it's only us here, but if it would be helpful to resend the link just to make sure that folks have oh, the okay. right one. Maura, I can do that. The okay. Alberta Johnson just emailed the link wasn't working. I'm going to go ahead and just read everyone. Okay, thank you so much. Good morning, Good ladies. This is Sergi. Hi, Sergi. Yeah, we, we got the second link. It looks like we were joining the second one that came. Oh. But I, this is this is the original one that I had my calendar. So yeah. I'm trying to... Okay. Sorry about the confusion. So you're fine. You're fine as long as we are all met. Yeah, as long as we get together here. So what is a small change you made in your routine? So it could be a personal change or your business that had a surprisingly big impact. Um, and I will start. And mine is more around my personal care. <clears throat> so um I've always meditated, but I used a candle to meditate and I would watch the flickering flame. That was how I meditated. That's how I learned to meditate from my therapist, actually. Um, but then once uh, after Duncan died, I really was looking for another way to meditate. So I listened to Light Watkins and he has oh a number of offerings around meditation and Zen being Zen. And he had this program on getting 10 minutes of silence, doing a silent meditation. And now I'm hooked. So that has really helped me. I have to do it every morning. It's like my body craves this 10 minutes. And believe me, it's probably like 30 seconds of quiet. The rest of the time, everything's going in my head and out my head. But the 30 seconds, if I can capture that and just think, Okay, I got 30 minutes, 30 seconds of uh, quiet that really helps me start my day. So I try to do that every morning. Some days I set my timer for seven minutes or five minutes if I'm running late, but usually I try to get 10 minutes of silent meditation. And that has really helped my day. How has anyone else done anything for their business or their personal life that you found has made a big difference? I'd love to hear it because I love to hear tips. I'm so I took some days off last week. So this is like uh, probably a reminder and I need to restart it. But I had a client um, who took forever. There was a big deadline Friday, took forever to review things. And so during my vacation was sending me a lot of emails and texts asking me to review something. And I got really mad, <laughs> uh, but didn't respond. I also internalized it because I was like, what am I doing that makes her think this is appropriate, um, which is a very Jolene thing to do. But at the end of the day, even though it kind of stressed me out, I didn't uh, I didn't respond and she figured it out. Um, but it reminded me that I need to um, be good and reinforce my need for boundaries so that that type of situation, because like the first two days of my vacation, even though I wasn't responding, I was still, it was still taking up mental space. And I was like, I, you know, I can't control other people, but I'd like to minimize being in that position again. So I've come back from vacation being like, you gotta be really serious <laughs> about these boundaries um, because that's not how it should be, obviously. Um, so uh, I'm restarting. I think I started my business uh, being pretty good about boundaries. Um, 
And then I think I've just gotten caught up in day-to-day -day and all the work. So just wanting to restart that practice. Um, uh, it's kind of my revelation for the last few days. It's hard to do, especially running your own business. You want to say yes to everyone. Say yes yeah. to every client. You want to help people, particularly, you know, with the work I do. But it's, yeah, but it's like, this was clearly her fault and not mine. So there was no yeah. reason for me to uh, be stressed by it. So. Oh, good. So hopefully it will help you going forward. Yes. Yes. Thank you. A small change in my sales funnel um, that's been working really well. Um, and so up until recently, I would take all of my sales calls. Um, so as a, a, a reminder, so I've got a wedding planning business. And so in addition to myself, I've got some other planners that I, I book their calendars as well. And I would take all of the sales calls and then sort of distribute it out to the planners. And um, my hit rate for myself personally was very, very high. I was very proud of like my success rate for like when I was plan like booking for myself. But my hit rate when I was booking for other people was like abysmal. And so I was like, I was so curious about like what language was I using? What was the situation? Whatever. Well, I we're testing it out right now, but so far everything is pointing really positively where, so I've got my director of planning who's kind of my second in command. And so she takes all of her sales calls, right? And she's able to say, you know, I'll be your personal planner for the day, you know, X, Y, Z. And so they've had the opportunity to meet her and ask her questions directly rather than everything funneling through me. And so far it's been, you know, a, a really solid percentage. So we did have one, but I don't, I, it's not her fault. Uh, absolutely. Who, who didn't go through and booked. It just wasn't a fit. Um, but other than that, we're four for five in that, that process. And so I think just empowering my other people also to like take on those responsibilities to make those personal connections. You know, there's still some work in the background that I can do in advance to set them up for success, but you know, like having them be the face and the voice has uh, been really good. Wow, that's interesting. So what do you think you did? So what's the difference? I think it's just because they they want to like see and know who they'd be with on the day, oh, right? You know, okay. like, and then because it, it was kind of clunky and awkward if I was like, oh, you know, I'm going to introduce you to Claire after this meeting. Like they didn't want to schedule another meeting necessarily, oh, yeah. but, you know, like Claire might not have been available like during the sales call, you know, so um, I just think that I wasn't sort of just instilling the confidence in the client, like with what I was saying, but if someone's able to say like, oh, I will be your coordinator for oh, the day, yes. like it's me, um, you know, it's been, been working well. Good. So the yeah. kind of trust factor. Yeah. Yeah. And great point there too, in terms of like plan B or just like, well, I want, I want the boss. Like I want the one in charge. Like why, yeah. why won't you be the one for the day? So uh, like, yeah, it's just, um, it's been, Again, a, a newer test, we're going to give it 10 people before we make a decision on it, but all signs are indicating really positively. That's great. Thank you for sharing. Uh, kind of this is, this is Sergi. Yeah. Laura, you just inspired and reminded me about my uh, one of my last clients that um, I booked. I also do photography on the side. So to your point about the weddings, um, my last one of my last bookings that I did, I you know didn't even how do I put it? I didn't uh, put up a, a super salesman face. I said, I got you. You know, this is what you need. Sure, you got it. You know, how simple is that? Just making them reassuring them that I will be the one taking care of their problem, and they don't have to worry about the rest. So they had this problem of, hey, hiring a wedding photographer. And, and I stepped in and I said, okay, sure, you got it. That's it. How do you see it? What's going on? Like, what do you need? What time? What day? Great. So, and I said, and she booked me right away. I was like, how did you do that? Like, what actually made you book me so fast? She's like, well, you just solved my problem because the other photographer said, well, we need this with this. What about this? There's this package, this package made it so hard for me to choose. So one of the things that um, that I changed is not overthinking, not overcomplicating it for the clients. 
you know their problem because they're already talking to you. So anytime you have a client that is not even sure, you say, all right, I, I see your problem. I know how to solve it. You got it solved. Let's let's just discuss you know, anything that's important for you. And then trust me, your problem has been solved already. And that made me think that that may be the key to not selling, but actually solving their problem. That's one point that I wanted to mention. So Laura, you know, good on, on your points. Um, and good luck with uh, the rest of your business. And if you want to collaborate, let me know as well. Yeah, totally. And then the second, and then the second point that I wanted to uh, say that small change that I made in my life that helps me through my life and business and everything else is walking. Such a small thing, but just like you said, more I'm meditating. You know, uh, I've done some meditations, uh, some serious ones, uh, you know, retreats for, you know, for, for a number of hours a day. And but that's hard, and as you know, more that's that's difficult to sit and meditate and not think about anything, which is the whole point. But walking is what makes my brain spin really productively. And then after the walk, I have like a lot of solutions or great ideas that I come and implement. So I think walking and allowing yourself that time to rest and you know, a, a mind vacation just do nothing, just walk and observe, and you know, wheels will keep spinning. So those are the two things that I observed. Thank you for sharing. I know someone just gave me a tip and said, while you're walking, carry a little piece of, like a little pad of paper and a pen. So you write down all your, the things that come to your mind. Cause I know while I'm walking my dog, all these, all these creative topics come up and I think, wow, I should have written this down, but maybe it is, you need the whole vacation the whole time. I don't know. Yeah. More of what you might consider too is doing like voice memos on your phone as oh, well. Yes. Um, yes. I, I really love doing that. And I've got one one entrepreneur friend in particular and we'll send, you know, just like two minute voice clips or whatever, like as we're walking or, yeah. you know, just kind of in that that flow state, whatever. Um, and then we can go back and revisit those and like comment on each other's and stuff. So I like the voicemails rather than like writing because I yeah. you know I don't know like while you're walking or like yeah. sometimes my it comes too fast in my brain and it's just like I just need to say it out loud rather than write it down that's true yeah I like that thank you does anyone else want to share a small change they made in I their think, life I think, or business I, I got I'm sorry I got, got one more thing to to your point Laura there is also an AI that could transcribe those thoughts into text so that may be easier if you want to just you know keep ah. going in. yeah <laughs> I, I have something. Okay. Um, I was trying to increase marketing via social media. That's something that I just did not have time for, nor could delegate to anybody. So just kind of, how do I make it consistent, um, to just increase my audience via social media? And I feel like what was holding me back is I felt like I needed something directly tied to my business. Like I have, this workshop booked or like, you know, this is happening. And I realized that I could indirectly post things related to my business. For instance, this weekend, I attended a gala for a radio um, station that has supported my business from day one. So I posted about that. Um, I'm also, a my, my business teaches financial empowerment through storytelling, but I also am a creative writer. So I had my play in a play festival that touched to aspects of money and themes of money. So I posted about that. So the fact that it wasn't like wealth I am is putting on a workshop on this date, it was still things that were indirectly tied to the business. And I felt like, okay, now I could post more, right? Because yeah. it's it, it's related, even though it's not directly related. Yeah. Um, so I feel like that's creating more consistency. Yeah, that's great. You know what else you can use? Like uh Sergey suggested is AI, and you can just say to AI. Hey, I posted this yesterday. What could I post today that's you know tangential, that's related to what mm -hmm. I posted yesterday? Mm -hmm. um, and these are the topics that I cover, and it will come up. It doesn't, you know, you don't use it word for word, but it will come up with a theme that really makes it easy. Nice, good idea. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Thank you for sharing, everyone. We're going to take ten minutes now. And Laurel, I see you. Thank you for joining us. We're going to take about 10 minutes though be now because this is the end of our program, the last of six months. We're just going to take 10 minutes for you to take this program survey. So if you could use this QR code, 
or this link here to take a survey for us. Our funders always want to hear, you know, how you've done on your six month goal or how you've done on a success story that you could share with us. So I just created like a four question survey. So we would love for you to take that right now, if you could, please. Uh, and then I'll gather up the details and be able to share it with uh, Huntington Bank. Can you Excuse please- me, Laura, are we able to put the link in the chat? Yep. Yes, yes. Okay, so the survey is there. The second link is a link to the Excel spreadsheet where your six month goals are. If you don't remember what you had said at the beginning, because this is kind of measuring your progress from what you said you thought you could do at the beginning of the session in January until now in June. So we'll just, I'll give you 10 minutes till 9.30 and then um, we'll have Laurel come on to talk about negotiating. The link Any to the questions? survey is taking me to, oh, I, never mind. I already took the survey. That's why. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And if it doesn't take 10 minutes, then just uh, put your faces on or raise your hand or something so we could move on to negotiation.
in like two yeah. more minutes. Does anyone need more time? Are we pretty much ready to go? Okay, let's get started on negotiations. Today, we are honored to have Laurel Bellows here. She's the founder and principal of the Bellows Law Group. Um, Laurel, I'm going to give you an introduction and then we can get started. Laurel's just going to have an open forum discussion on negotiating. So Laurel Bellows is the founder and managing principal of the Bellows Law Group. She's internationally recognized for her expertise in executive compensation, talent retention, and integration in connection with mergers and acquisitions, private equity transactions, and executive employment and separation agreements for businesses of all sizes. Laurel is widely recognized for her negotiating skills and business acumen as she supports senior executives at a transition crossroads that place family and business fortune at risk. It is this emotional landscape where Laurel thrives. She meets her clients at a challenging time, whether corporate separation or unanticipated offers are under consideration. She provides security, confidentiality, wise counsel, and strength based on many years of experience to make difficult decisions and move forward towards positive change. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. And if you can show your faces, that would be great. Oh, that makes a big difference. Thank you. I can see people, right? Yeah. <laughs> Anybody who's not in their pajamas, if you give me your, it would be great if I could actually see your face. And I don't even care if you're in your pajamas. <laughs> Just, uh, you know, I need to see your expressions, whether you're getting what I'm serving, whether you want to go in a different direction, and I'll be able to kind of at least identify with you. Thank you, Maura. <laughs> sure. Um, someone, Deirdre says she's sick as a dog, so she's not going to show her face. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, very, I'm very sorry, Deirdre. I was there just two days ago. <laughs> so there's hope that you'll live, right? We could, we could negotiate with your doctor, right? About, you know, your lifespan here, right? Um, there's so much to cover here. We're really not going to be able to talk about negotiation. I thought uh, Maura sent you some bullets by Bellows, I think. Do you, did you all get that in a, in an email? Uh, I don't. I'll send it right now. Okay. All right. Well, that's going to work because what I do at the end of a longer presentation is I just give you this to take with you. It's, it's 10 points, basically, um, that we've covered. And so we're not going to cover all of these. I'm going to come back and forth to them, but I am going to just start by looking at these bullets and this, you don't have to do anything except listen to me, but you'll know that some of these reminders are there for you already. So could anybody just chime in? You some are puzzled. Um, don't be put off by my resume. I do handle a negotiation for executive, senior executive search, but I've served on the board of the Women's Business Development Center uh, with love for maybe 25 years. I mean, I'm passionate about um, 
women entrepreneurs and all entrepreneurs, because that's what I am. So, you know, feel free to ask me any kind of question at all, and I will answer them. Also, more and I talked about the fact that you will have my email contact information, and you can always shoot me an email uh, with a question, and we can get together and talk about the question, if, if that helps. Uh, the first item I want to hear from each of you, so shout it out, give me a word that describes a well-negotiated deal. If you're aiming for Another something as part funny. of your negotiation, what would it be? Say the word sold, because I keep thinking of like auction. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> So, okay. Well, yeah, that's interesting. I don't know. You know, I don't know if those are real negotiations, Cassandra, but yes. No, so, no. I don't know why. That's no, it's like if your goal is to sell and it's sold, I think that's a good agreement. Yes, 100%. Anybody else? Strategic. Oh, um, the negotiation was strategic. Yes. Okay. As in you were smart enough to prepare and develop a strategy and you were able to actually incorporate your strategy into the negotiation. Yes, I like that a lot. I'm wondering where you are. I think, is there a second page here? It's me, Stacy. I'm traveling in Mexico right now. That's the only reason I'm not on camera. <laughs> where are you in Mexico, Stacy? Right now I'm in Guadalajara in Zopopan. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm in Puerto Vallarta. I'll see you later, Laurel. We've got a date. It's raining. It's, it's raining. <laughs> if you're coming my way, let me know. Um, I put I put the bullets by Bellows into the chat so you can see the list there. Everyone? Okay, so you could just have it, download it, all right, but you don't have to focus on it right now. All right, if I wanted to find a perfect, so to speak, uh, negotiation, the perfect agreement. It would be something that was durable. It was not too tight, too fabulous for either side, too horrible for you, all right? Um, because you just took it because you thought you needed it, all right? That's uh, the, the perfect agreement is something that both sides want to abide by because what do we know about agreements, especially when you're talking with me, the lawyer, all right, they can be ripped. All right. I mean, you know, people just don't necessarily abide by something that they cannot afford to abide by. So if you negotiated too tight and you're just, and you're going to go bankrupt by following this agreement, you're not going to follow it. That's not what both sides want. They want an agreement that both of them are excited, all right, excited about, um, about embarking on. This is going to get me money. This is going to get me longer term clients. This is going to get me whatever is on my get me list, all right? But the enforceable agreement is something that's very important. Now, what about long term and short term relationships when you're negotiating? Okay, you're negotiating for a long-term relationship sometimes. It's, you know, a deal that is either going to repeat itself. This is not a one-time in and out of your store or your or your venture. You want to build a relationship or, or you don't really care about that long-term relationship because that's not the kind of business you have, all right? It's a, it's a short-term relationship. Maybe you change your product line every so often or maybe your clients are you know, by referral and they're a one-time client because their need is one time. So you have to think in terms of what you are negotiating as far as relationship. So I see guys on this, on this line and that's wonderful, but I have my majority of women. So you can all respond to this. Women, I want hands, real ones. You don't have to go find the palm. All right. I want hands. How many of you are concerned and don't like to negotiate? That's it. You all love negotiation. Yeah, the hands are coming up a little faster. I just want to. Yes. OK, you can admit this because can you tell me why you don't love negotiation? It's uncomfortable. Somebody. I'm sorry, Laura. It's uncomfortable. Yeah, why? Um, you don't want to be perceived a certain way. You don't want to burn a bridge. You don't want to, you know, like just, I don't know. Yeah. Come off, uh, in, in all of the, the words that might be swirling in our minds right now. 
That's right. That was um, that was just like perfect. You got them. Anybody else have a reason they're a little uncomfortable or really um some people fear negotiation, particularly women. All right. So let's put that word out and be comfortable with it. Um, we're going to talk about getting rid of that fear. Um, anybody else? Sergi. All right. So I see you. So I'm putting you on the line. All right. Are you uncomfortable in negotiating? I'm guessing you called on me. Okay. Yes. I, I called on you uh, because I want to know what the guy says. So are fantastic. you uncomfortable? Thank you for letting me uh, asking me this question. I was thinking to answer, but I didn't raise my hand. But here's my answer. Um, yes, I am uncomfortable, but I still go into it because I discover that whatever I thought may happen, it does not really happen. So negotiating for me is uh, listening to the other person and not listening to my thoughts, what they may say. So uh, planning, yes, planning ahead on what they may answer or having the best uh, best case scenario and the worst case scenario. Okay, but Again, you're not envisioned. you're not fearful of a negotiation. You're not uncomfortable about going in. You don't have like oh oh, oh I am oh I am unfearful and uncomfortable, but I still go in because my oh, yes. fear is okay. Un we're going to get to that. We're going to get to the still go in a second. Right. I see a hand, Marsha. I was just um, I think I'm afraid of the other person being a better negotiator than me, and I'm yes. going to come out. Okay. Those yeah. <laughs> because we're also competitive, right? We want to make certain yeah. that we're negotiating and we you don't have a lot of experience. So women, so let me give you a generalization that I think you're all identify with, and then we can talk about a little bit more. But women are particularly, so here's your clue about women, Serge. Um, the women are particularly um, uncomfortable with negotiation because we... Um, want to build relationships. We're all about building relationships and negotiation feels feels to us like it's not a building of relationship. We want to say yes. We don't want to say yes to everything, but we want to be able to have a, a comfortable conversation and not demand things and, you know, and not have somebody say no to us and are coming back at them and saying, hey, I can't, you know, I, I can't accept the no, but if you don't say yes, we're going nowhere here. I mean, in other words, drawing lines and things that are things that we don't normally do in relationships with other people. All right, we try and kind of come to a compromise, get along. We're not necessarily talking about that win-win world. All right. We don't hear that a lot anymore, do we? Win-win. Um, not a lot of people. We want to go into a negotiation to create a scenario where we could come together, develop a lot of options, not negotiate what we think we were there to negotiate, but come in with maybe four or five or six different ways of getting to the same place. But we um, want to be careful. Win-win to me is um, sometimes people develop it when they're building relationships and negotiation. That would be a win-win if you came up with a uh, a scenario where maybe you even go into business together or you develop a product and you sell it or something of that nature. That would be a win-win for everybody. But uh, you don't want to get going too easy in here. You can negotiate with a smile all the time. Your default expression, ladies and gentlemen, your default expression um, has to be something that you practice. So I see Nahanda back there. Nahanda, I want you to come sit down for one second and then you can do whatever you want. I want you to look at your face. Okay? Now I want you to smile. Is there a smile there? Yes. Oh my goodness, it's infectious. You have an infectious smile. So yeah. everybody, I want you to, to practice two or three default expressions, go-to expressions when you're negotiating. So you can watch me. If I'm listening, I'm very careful about my expression. It will remain boringly the same. It will be relaxed, maybe a little smile, maybe just a soft expression. I'm listening. I don't want people to actually think that I think what I'm listening to is the stupidest idea of all time or something that would cause me trauma. So I need a default expression that's very comfortable and easy, but not necessarily this is the best thing in the whole world, right? But it would a uh, smile at the beginning of your negotiation and throughout, all right? If there's things that are happening, you need to be able to express that in a way that the other person develops a warmth toward you. You're not going to negotiate anything under high pressure 
Okay. If we can talk about, you know, difficult situations in a minute, but you want to, you want to smile. You want a, you know, like, um, like a no way. All right. Just, <laughs> right. But you want mostly a default expression that people see that they're looking at the entire time. If you're on zoom or in person, and if you're on zoom, make sure to check your expression as you go forward. You want some kind of comfortable, not worried, not concerned. I've got it all in control expression. And you really need to practice that. Something a lot of people don't talk about. One thing that I started out with is prepare, prepare, prepare. There is no negotiation too small, all right, for you to prepare maybe 10 times what you think. You need to know who's on the other side. Who are you negotiating with? What are their responsibilities? And have you talked to anybody? If they're new to you, have you talked to anybody about how they negotiate? Are they, um, can you be conf confident in their truthfulness? Do they lie? Do they scream? Do they um, promise you something and not deliver? Do they um, come to the table willing to really talk about options and listen to you? you um, who are they? All right. Are they data driven or are they um, kind of relationship driven? Because how you negotiate with them and presenting your 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 program, your idea, your information, support information about how you're doing in your revenue and things like that. How you present everything is driven by the other person. All right. What their position is. If they're a CFO, if they're a COO operator. All right. You know. OK, that they're going to be very data driven and they're going to be impressed by that. And they're going to want things precise, just very succinctly presented bullets. This is what I got. This is what I brought you to look at. Is there more information you think you could need? What do you think about this? Go to a point on the data that's very important, your sales record, your um, but not wishful thinking. They are not interested in what you think is going to happen with no support. So, and if they are relationship building, willing to listen to you and come up with different frameworks for a way to do a deal, that's a different conversation. So then stretch your creative muscle and try and get them engaged in thinking about options. So when you look at the bullets, you're gonna see that it says, set a precise goal, be able to justify, practice your questions, All right, But that's not what we're talking about here today because you can see that. I want you to talk about with you um, some uh, techniques. So the first thing I would say, I want you to put your dream agreement for this particular negotiation and every negotiation is different even if you're selling the same product over and over. It's different because the person on the other side is different. It's different because their needs are different. Your needs at that moment are different. What you might want to give and get are going to be different at every negotiation. You want to keep your dream agreement in writing. You, the non-lawyer, are going to write that agreement in non-lawyer language. It's just... I want A, I want it delivered by, or I can deliver by, I want it picked up at my store. I don't want too many colors, right? I don't, you know, I don't, I, whatever it is that your dream, like the deal that I would make with you, the price that you would want, whether it includes shipping or not, um, or if it's FOB, you know, just where, where is it and how, and what is your dream? Not what they're going to say, anything. You must put precisely what you want to accomplish in some form of bullet agreement. It doesn't have to be, but it does have to have a delivery date, everything that ordinarily would be in your agreement because you're gonna be negotiating every one of those points. Right. So deadlines, um, when are you most comfortable delivering, right? And what if they're asking for a faster delivery? Can you do it? Okay, uh, so that's another, that's another issue. Do not negotiate an agreement that you can't abide by. That's the bottom line, just because you need it. Don't negotiate something that you can't do, right? So you can always say, I'll get back to you or I'll come back to you in a month when I've got better stock. I've been so successful. My inventory is low at the moment. So I was just trying at this price to sell out my inventory. So you could do all kinds of things, but you have to, you have to um, put your dream agreement in writing so you know what you're working from. Now, uh, we just heard that 
listening is a skill. When you listen to me, are you thinking ahead of all the things that are on your mind that you have to do today? All right. So somebody gave me a practice, which is when you're listening to somebody talk and you have to switch in and out of this because you can't be too focused on listening after you've trained yourself to listen. But what you want to do is you want to listen for the S's in every sentence. Just try and identify the S's because it's a list and you don't have to do this when you're negotiating. You should be doing it with people that you talk to every day, all the time to see if you really are listening to them and then switching to make sure that in listening for the S's, you haven't forgot to listen for the actual content of what they're saying. You can't be planning what you're going to say next. I know everybody says this to you, but everybody does it. When I'm listening, I'm listening for how I can communicate with the person that I'm talking to in a way in which they will not only listen, but hear me, understand me, and be able to put into gear what I'm talking about. So I need to be certain that I'm presenting in a succinct enough way so that somebody could listen all right. Is there an S there? Yes. Okay. Yes. There's an S. All right. Listen to me and not think about what they're going to say until I finished my remarks. All right. Hopefully they're not that long. And then a little silence so that you can then develop what you want your response to be. If you are developing your response, you are not listening, I promise you. And that's why I'm giving you the S tool. If you are developing your response while I'm talking, you are not listening to me. And listening means looking at my expression, looking at my eyes, looking at my hands, my body lotion, my body lotion, my body motion. Okay. And if I'm standing or talking to you on the phone, and if you, and that's why Zoom's so important. Um, if you can do it, you get to see who they are. You get to see a little bit of where they live, right? All the people who have backgrounds are shutting you out of where they live to some extent. I'm making certain that you could see if you wanted that I'm in Mexico and it's raining outside because it's starting to be rainy season. This is our second rain um, this year, basically. We're very dry, but you could see that I'm living in a green world, right? And I'm very in flowers and I'm very happy about that. So um, that's one thing. You could you could start a conversation that's a bit personal if you have some sense of the time frame that you've been allotted for your negotiation. So you might say, hey, Laurel, I'm in Chicago. It's snowing. Where are you? Right. And so that's, you know, one of the reasons I, I do this when I'm in Mexico, when I'm at home, I have a more professional background, but this is my office in Mexico and I don't mind you um, sharing it with me. Listening important because it tells you what I may want. The opposite side, it tells you about who I am and what I might respond to. You might be wrong because I'm a very complicated person inside this head and smile, but you will get clues as to who I am. You're going to be able to see my art. All right. You can't see it now, but um, you can see my Mexican pot um, and you can see my orange chair. Now, how many people do you know have an orange chair? It should give you a clue as to who I am and what's going on inside my brain when you're selling. I just gave you an example, did you catch it, of one of the greatest negotiating tools. I'm guessing you mentioned uh, looking at the details and following not only what they're saying, but what it's about. Good try. That's what I caught. That's, yes, that's true. Now realize what's going on now. Are you listening? You're selling yourself because you're showing other aspects of yourself through video and branding. So if you were to say to me, if I were to say to you, 
I need $10, $10 a piece for each of these creative teas or something of that nature, right? You know, I, I need to take $10 away. And that um, includes shipping for each one. And if you buy 100, um, then, you know, I can give you a 10% discount. But the, the teas that I have come from all over the world. And I just, you know, they're African, they're Asian, they're, you know, they're expensive and very, very, very special teas. So you put that out there, that's your offer. And the other side does this. And they're not buying in. <laughs> it's it's what, oh, what's different wrong. about. <laughs> All right. You're not wrong anytime, Alberta, but that's, <laughs> that's silence. It's meant to make you uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Women generally, all right, take that silence negatively. Yes, Alberta, 100% right. Okay, but it's not negative. I want to see what you do. First person to jump into that generally um, gives something up. And you are absolutely right to be uncomfortable with that silence. But if you were to let it, and by the way, I only counted to 15. That's not the silence I usually use. It's about 30 seconds. 30 seconds is a long time of silence. And all I'm doing is waiting for you to renegotiate your deal because in part, okay? So I'm silent and you get uncomfortable and you think, oh, that was not a good idea. Well, then you say, then you are the first person to talk. And you say, okay, well, maybe I can do X. Never, ever, ever, never, ever, ever negotiate against yourself, either due to silence or anything, all right? You need to get the response for the other guy and you can wait as long as you want. You can get up and pour yourself a cup of coffee if there's such a thing, even, you know, even in your house, you could say, oh, you know what? I'm gonna get a glass of water while you're thinking over what I just proposed. Okay. I mean, that's the equivalent of silence in a sense. You can, you can just, if you're in a room, you can go to the washroom. You can, um, you can start to look at your email a little bit. Let them break the silence. Let them break the silence. Now they're going to use it against you. What are you going to do? So I, I have a quick question. Um, so with that silence, if you break the silence, hi, my name is Tyshawn. Um, could you say if they were silent for too long? So what's your thoughts? I mean, is can you say yes, that? Yes, you or? could, Taishan, but don't use it too quickly, please. All right, yes, of course you can break it. Just but don't break it by giving them a better deal. And and you can count that silence. If they're if they're using it against you or you're using it against them, you make you the silence I want you to count at a very slow one one hundred to one hundred. You get to fifteen, it gets uncomfortable. You get to twenty, it gets uncomfortable. Don't just say. So how's that how's that work for you? Silence again. Not so much what are your thoughts, okay? And then they're going to give you their negative thoughts. Just say, how's that work for you? You don't say, what are your concerns? And you don't bring up another product. And you see how it works. You're going to have to play with it. You're going to have to play with it. Now, what happens is somebody's screaming at you. Do you ever get screamers? Give me a hand raise so I, I won't waste time on this. But yeah. So you have to plan for the screamers. How do you plan for the screamers? You probably take... If you have in-person meetings with your buyers, which you don't have very often anymore, and particularly because you might be, you know, national or international in scope, but you you want to give them a chance. You want to egg them on a little bit so that they can scream early on in the negotiation, and you can just say, "Hey, that doesn't do it for me." Okay, tell you what. Um, why don't we, so one way of dealing with screamers is speaking very slowly and quietly right back at them so quietly that they have to, like, they have to really hurt to listen, right? That's a, that's a reaction to screamers. Sometimes people laugh at them. <laughs> you can't be serious. This is like, this is really not worth your screaming at me, is it? Okay. And they'll say, yeah, this is very important to me. I just scream, 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 scream. Okay, okay, 
You can't scream at me. I'm not going to deal. I'm not going to deal with that. If this deal is something you want to do, we're going to have to modulate our voices and talk to people. You know, as people. I see Cassandra. You have your hand up. Yeah, I was going to ask. So, with um the silence, and say, for instance, someone is screaming at you, what is your tone after you've kind of broke the silence? Because I don't want to like. Silence and screaming, two different conversations. <laughs> Separate them. Um, I just, okay. I moved from silence. I just gave you silence. There are many ways you can use it, okay? It's a great technique because I don't have time to give you all kinds of negotiating techniques. So I gave you that one. But I also want to tell you what happens if you've got a really nasty person, all right? You need to know who's going to be on the other side of you. You need to know that. You need to talk to some people who've negotiated with them before, or maybe you have and you haven't given it some thought. So you're going to make some notes as to how they negotiate, you know, and they will negotiate pretty much the same each time. You won't because you want to be unpredictable in the way you negotiate if you're negotiating with the same buyer. All right. So you want to you want to mix up your styles. Like Sergi was saying, you want to be strategic about um, how you're going to present and what you're going to present. But OK, when it comes to a screamer, if I'm negotiating in person or I'm negotiating by Zoom, I try and egg them on in a situation where I can walk away. So I will offer to go to their office if I know they're going to scream. I kind of go them, not go them badly, but get to a point where they would start screaming ordinarily in order to control. And then I would do something in a soft voice. I would just say, are you going to keep screaming? They might stop. They might stop. And they might start again. I say, no, we're not going to negotiate getting this at that tone. All right, that's not the way we negotiate. And then if they do it again, just say, hey, you know what? I bet you've had a very bad day. Don't tell them they're an arrogant SOB. Okay, that's not going to get you anything. I bet you've had a very, very difficult day. And why don't we reschedule the time that you're able to talk to me? First, information go on i'll call you tomorrow and see if you feel like talking okay now the, we have a question in the chat someone asked what about the mansplainer who leaves the room sunny asked that what about the what the mansplainer who leaves the room yes he's Thank negotiating you. with you and he just walks out you know where yes he is you know acting like a child and then leaves the room and then leaving me behind or you know during the conversation who is talking about business deal and then what about they just excuse themselves to you know disengage the conversation right so Sunny, all right it depends on how desperate you are but i i'm pretty sure you're not going to stay there no no you're not going to stay there all right now um, you can go out to his assistant and say, you know, he left the room. If he went to the bathroom, that's fine. It's not because he should have said, excuse me for a second. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just say, you know, I assume our meeting's over. Tell him that um, if he wants to speak with me about this, then he needs to call me. Over everything we're talking about, we need the way to weigh the importance of this negotiation for you. You can't really walk out if you have a deadline. You can't really walk out or assume that he's walked out if you must have this deal. If you're desperate for the deal, if it's a meaningful deal, you're going to have to figure a way of listening to the screamer. And in that context, that's where I use the softer voice. All right. I just don't ever scream back. I just make him fight to hear what I'm saying. I mean, it's a very interesting dynamic when he can hardly hear what you're saying. And you're not fooling him and don't look like it's a game. It's just that's, I mean, for you, you have a very soft and wonderful voice. I bet it gets harder and tougher. Okay. Um, you can have a slow, tough, let's say definite voice. You can put definite into your tone without being tough. Okay. And you can then, um, there was is somebody who was talking to me about, um, I can't see it right now, but in any case, talking about, uh, you know, what, what, 
what you give back, you can always say, you know, as she said, well, what do you think about that? Right? You can you can start asking questions. Just say, what about that did you did you think works? I can't negotiate with somebody who screams and doesn't tell me what works for them. Okay. You know, that's why, or you can explain why this, or you can just go further. Well, let me tell you why I made that offer. Why, why this deal is good for me. Why I need $10 a tea, whatever it is. All right. You could, you could forget the no. All right. You just, when you hear a no, you walk past it. You don't even hear it. Just negotiate past the no with all your good points until somebody shuts you down. No, we can't do that. Well, you probably can if you think about it like this, all right? The value, the competitive pricing, the shipping being free or whatever. And um, there's a, you know, there's a lot there that you could be negotiating. I want you to keep always your best alternative in mind. That's what we call BATNA, B-A-T-N-A. I think some of you, if you've been reading on negotiation, have heard it. Best alternative to a negotiated agreement. You can look it up on Google. And when I when you look at my bullets, it says, keep your best alternative in mind. So I'm selling you, well, let's stay with my tea, all right? Because it's right here. So I'm thinking about it. Um, what is your best alternative to the deal you put it on the table? Is it a different deal completely? Is it that your best alternative to the deal you put on the table is to sell your limited inventory to another buyer who's bought it at that price in the past? Is your best alternative to come down in price or increase the quantity? Or if you haven't offered free shipping, to offer free shipping, you know, or to put in something extra, you know, um, that they could, a little gift that they could give to their client. All right, something cute and, you know, whatever. It doesn't have to be a lot and it doesn't have to be your product. It just be something, you know, like a little piece of soap or something else that you sell. And I know that you all do that. So if you're selling tea and you have, um, you know, uh, containers where you can put the tea so that you can you can store it or you can, you know, put it into a, a Keurig coffee maker or something of that nature, you might give them one of those. Right, but you have to think about what your best alternative is. And there can only be, walk away with anything here. This is what I want to say to you. There can only be one best alternative. You are looking for your best alternative. And that's the one you keep in mind. You don't negotiate with yourself or anybody else with having your very best alternative in front of your eyes, so to speak. You don't Figure out two or three of them, and I'm going to give you a reason why. You can't negotiate one to three. You can only negotiate one to one, which is better, okay? If this is better, the one on that you put on the table, get rid of this, but find another. Excuse me. Let's use that one. <laughs> All right, so um, best alternative. What do I mean? The best examples that I give have to do with um, your an apartment, your home. So uh, let's say I live in a one bedroom rental apartment in a large building, all right, downtown Chicago. My lease is up and my landlord comes to me and he says, hey, Laurel, want to stay? And I would say, yeah, I, I want to stay, but I need, I've been here about five years. I need new carpet. I need a paint job and I need a new refrigerator. And he says, hmm, well, let me suggest this to you. I have a one bedroom that's just been freshly painted and is all new. And it's on the, you're on the third floor and it's on the 18th floor and the rent is X, right? It's higher rent. Oh, that's interesting, but I can't afford that, right? So you say to him, that's a good alternative, but um, that's high for me. But on the other hand, do you have a two bedroom? Because if I'm going to move and pay the cost of moving, I might as well combine my office and my home. Do you have a two bedroom? 
And he said, ah, yeah, I do. I don't think you're going to like it that much because it's, you know, it's more expensive, but I can, I can paint it. Why don't we look at it? That kind of thing. And then you say to yourself, rental, huh? Across the street, there's a condominium building that I've always looked at. It's not very expensive. And you say to them, well, let me think about it. I'm going to check out the condo across the street. Maybe I should be, um, maybe I should be buying. And you go check out the condo across the street and you check out the one bedroom and you check out the third floor and you check out the 15th floor and you think about it a lot, right? And they actually allow pets and you have a cat and that's really exciting. So that's, you. I mean, you're going to have a cat. You want to have a cat. And um, so now we've got all these things popping along until you say, you know what? I've been thinking about a cat only because I live in the city and in a condo, but I actually would rather have a dog. So maybe I should go out to the suburbs, get a little townhouse with a little tiny backyard, allow my, you know, allow my um, dog to go out and just be able to smell the flowers and the cicadas, right? Um, we don't have any Mexico. All right. So the cicadas are out there and you're thinking, well, maybe this is, oh, but it's a good time to negotiate because you can, of course, tell the person, the landlord that you would have ordinarily done that, but with the cicadas around, it's horrible and you don't want it to move now and you'd have to move now. And can he do something about your first three months rent because um, you have to live with those guys? So now you have about five or six alternatives in front of your nose and you cannot negotiate with your landlord who's offering you a one or a two bedroom. And you have to decide between the two of those before we go forward. So let's say you're, you know, you're deciding on the two bedroom. Now, what are you going to compare it to? Are you comparing it to the one bedroom condo, the two bedroom condo, the townhouse? Decide. And only for the second, because then the one to one negotiation that you've just decided on is going to switch when the landlord comes back with another deal. And it's going to switch when you go to the condo and say, well, you got to do something with, you know, the oven or, you know, you got to give me parquet floors or something of that nature. And but, you know, you have a laundry room right there on your floor and there's something to be said for that. So best alternatives, always fluctuating. That's what makes negotiation hard because it doesn't stay still. But you must take away the fact that no matter how the offers change, you need the space to sit back have a cup of coffee or a half a cup and think about what your best alternative is going to be and what you're going to offer next. Um, strategic timing. You could use deadlines. Make sure they don't backfire to you. I need to know by X when you don't really need to know at all. Delivery requirements that they put onto you. You can say, you know, maybe you're negotiating that because that sounds a little short. I can give you a much better deal if I can deliver in three months, all right? Or I'm going, I'm going, you know, I'm just changing suppliers and I'm moving, maybe moving from China to Malaysia, all right, to to make this product. And I don't know exactly, you know, what my delivery time is going to be. How flexible can you be? Um, or can I deliver in smaller quantities? Can I deliver, you know, 50 of these and then 50 and then 50 instead of 100, 100, 100, 100, but do it quicker, all right? But um, so there's a thousand alternatives you can put on the table, but you must have one best. You must have in your mind when you walk into your negotiation exactly what all the possibilities are that you can put on the table. That's why you're putting your dream agreement in there. And then after you're doing your dream agreement, you're going to mark alternatives in there so you can come out with them. And then you can, when you're listening, thinking of something, I mean, they may, they, you could say, Hey, all right, you're importing from China. Um, where, what happens if they're reporting from the same, uh, you, importing from the same city that you're that you're in all right that you're that you're manufacturing and maybe you can make a deal where they piggyback your product you deliver to china you know to their office or their their in their factory in china and they deliver to you to themselves here in the united states along with other products they're delivering there are a thousand alternatives and that's why you need to talk around um, 10 calls to ask about what the condition of the company is that you're negotiating with. Are they uh, in flush with cash? Are they in trouble? Do they need time, uh, you know, your payment time? 
There's usually 30 days. Maybe you're okay because things are going well and you can offer somebody 60 or 90 days, but on the button with some kind of interest penalty if they don't pay. Um, there's, again, now here comes the big one. And then I'm going to open it up in case you need anything, because I'm sure I must be out of time. Yes, um, we, have, we have about five more minutes. Okay, so here's the one thing. How do you know if you should walk away? How do you know when it's time to walk away? The deal is more risky than it is beneficial. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? If they're asking you to do something unethical. Absolutely. Don't even let them breathe and don't do and and don't do business with them because if they're asking, there's going to be a problem behind the scenes. And these days we know that um, the Anti-Corruption Act is going to burn you badly. Okay. But yes. Okay. Although you can clarify if they what they meant, you can clarify if they understood it to be against your law. Okay. But if they try and get around your laws, then you want to be very, very careful. What about gonna... the fact if... Yes, go ahead. Sorry, I'm going to guess if you feel that they're not willing to negotiate. Ah, I love that. Okay. If you feel that this, there's no, no negotiation on the table. So how do you bring that out? Don't you do that directly? Just say, hey, sounds like you don't, you know, this is something you can't use. You don't, you don't really want to do that because you're thinking you're sell, sell, sell. But if the if the walking away is your best alternative to the deal on the table, you're going. You're going. If you can't afford the deal, all right? A little different than Sergi said, and I'll come back to him. But you walk away when walking away is the best alternative to what's on the table. And if what's on the table is so terrible because they don't feel like negotiating, you just say, hey, is it that you don't need the product? Is it that, you know, just you could keep the conversation going, but just say, sounds like you don't need the product or you don't like the product or you want a different kind of product or you're already buying this someplace else. So is there something I should know? Because I don't think, uh, you know, you don't seem to be interested. We can save each other a lot of time. Uh, but I think you should push a little to see, is it because of this product? Are you buying it elsewhere? Is there a reason why? Or you just don't think you need it. If they don't need it, then you can give them some alternative uses, Sergi, right? I mean, you can figure out why they're not negotiating, but he is 100% right. If they're not negotiating, be direct, figure it out and go and go home. Just say, okay, well, you know all about what we do and remember that we do A and B. And if it's sometime you or somebody else you know is in need, I'd really appreciate your business or you're referring them to me. Uh, but I think you asked first, what about this is not good for you? And you can learn about the negotiation technique a little bit. You know, what did they need you to bring up? They might say something that you can do. So you want to ask. You want to ask. All right. Any other questions, Cassandra? Is that is that your hand? Yes. I was going to ask, what's like a, a decent amount of time to give someone to reconsider and get back with us without us kind of like looking well, first desperate? First of all, you can ask. Hmm? You can ask. Okay. You can ask, how long is it going to take you to get back? Which reminds me of rule number two. Never negotiate without understanding what your counterpart's authority is. Ask them, do you have authority to give me a deal right now to buy 100 boxes of my tea? Is that your authority or do you have to go up and get approval? If they need to get up and go to approval, you want to talk to the purple who, the person who's approving all right, there is no doubt that when they have to go to a board or they have to go to the president or to their boss, um, then you are, are not negotiating with the person who's able to make the decision. And how do, how do they handle that usually? They go up, they tell their board or they tell the person with authority and the person with authority either says, no way, go back and do this better. All right, get a better price and then come back to me. I mean, they actually press their salesperson. 
All right. And that person comes back to me, you and says, can't do it. Where in fact, they probably could do it. It's just that they went and they pressed and they said no. And they got their guy to go back and beg you to do it better. All right. So you have to be careful and find out right at the front. All right. What's your what's your level of authority here? Can we can we are we doing a deal for tea or do you have to take this someplace? And if you do, who and what do they need to know and how can I help you do that? Or can we talk to them together? You know, after this conversation, can we bring this to them together? But um, anybody who tells you in a bigger deal that their board has authority or the president has authority, they're going to come back with another deal. So you need to leave yourself room. Anyone else? Sunny has a question. Yes, who? Sunny. Sunny. Yes. So when you are negotiation and in all this preparation and everything has done, but then the deal wasn't that suitable for you. And then what about the fear of burning the bridges? Because their relationship with the deal and it yes. has done all this, you know, efforts and times and then in strategies and then all they considered still the deal was not the best for me or it was not fair. Um, and I'm not getting anything that, you know, it is worth of my, you know, my value of my company, then how do you still maintain that relationship? Just say, yeah. So how about actually turning it around from a negotiation to just, you know, I love talking to you. You know, you've got a great company and you're got great responsibility and your job's very exciting. And I'd really like to help you out. Okay. But I don't know how. Tell me what would have helped you. Is there something else we can do together? All right. That's the first way. Or secondly, I love your company. I really like you, but I can't afford to do this deal. All right. So would you come back to me after you thought this through? Would you think it through one more time? Would you come back to me? Or if you don't mind, you know, if I have a new product that I think you're interested in, would you mind my coming back? All right. Or Say, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll think it through. And if, if I run a special in a month or two, I'll come back to you. But, I, you know, that's based on my inventory. And, you know, or do you want to try this? Right? Do you want to try this sample so that, but you've probably already done that. Maybe you even right, brought something that he could look at or, right? But you to build a relationship, you're the best at that, Sonny. I mean, that's the one thing we do really well. And that's that you smile, you don't get bitter, and you just say, hey, what you need to know is I gave you my very best price. Even, even below that, I can't afford. I just can't afford to do better. And, um, and I can't afford to um, leave anything on the table here because I gave you my very, very best survival price. Are you sure you can't do it? Well, then um, find somebody who can right is what you want to say please you know think about people who might be able to buy this um and uh, and not compete with you but you know to buy this and or whatever if i can ever be of help to you in any way with a contact that i might have for shipping or something like that please feel free to call me you know i have a great packaging person if you need somebody like that i'd be glad to help you do your job and thank you for taking the time Okay, thank you so much. Cassandra, do you have another question or is your, no, okay. Great. Well, Laurel, we appreciate your help today and your expertise. Uh, thank you for being a great friend of the Women's Business Development Center and for helping our solopreneurs today. I know they got a lot of good nuggets of information, a lot of good tips. They're gonna, uh, we're gonna take a five minute break now and then come back and I will put you into breakout rooms and we can discuss some things that Laurel um, brought up. Or do you so, want um, me to join? Okay. Yeah. Do you want me to join you, um, um, Laurel? Actually, I have a, a quick question, uh, Tyshawn Wardlaw. Do you have available services um, to speak with you about more things with the negotiation? Or so I think that Maura's going to put my email in okay. the chat. Yes. And I you're going to send me an email and say we met, we talked. I'm a solo. Okay. <laughs> give, give me some ideas. Okay, thank you. And no, no problem, everybody. I will get I will get back to you. Um now, does anybody think that they want me to be in the chat with them? I, I would I mean in the breakout, or does that destroy your your um energy more? I'll do whatever you want. Um 
don't want, I don't think it'll destroy the energy. It might be hard to get you in and out of the chats. I mean, it okay. wouldn't be fair to only have you in one. Ah, okay. So everybody, if you have questions, just send me a little email. If you don't hear right back, because sometimes I get lost in my email, send it again. Okay. And, um, and good luck to each of you. Remember, you know, you're negotiating the same in a way, if you're negotiating something small or something large and big corporation versus small corporation is not frightening. It only means they have more power and more authority and more alternatives than the smaller negotiations. So don't let that scare you. And remember that you are the best negotiators because you do build relationships. So that's the fact that gives you the power your ability to build a relationship within about 30 seconds or less. And that is what needs to have happened to get you connected. So you have the first, the first 15 to 30 seconds. All right. That influ, you know, the influencer time, that's that um, the flight or flight and, and your amygdala says, Oh, I like this person. She's safe. If that amygdala says that in the first 15 seconds, you're in for a conversation that will let you listen, you know, let them listen to you. So think about the friendly relationship for at least 15, to 20 seconds of the first time you meet them and goodbye thank you thank you everyone in the chat is saying that was such helpful information oh that makes me feel really good guys <laughs> gals guys people thank um, you yes. laurel we hope to see you again laurel thanks a lot oh, well i you can definitely... see me again by just yeah. yes i know i'm waiting for you Tyson. <laughs> bye okay thank you so we'll meet back here how about at 10 30 Is that for the breakout session or? Um, yeah, we're going to take a okay. five minute coffee break and then come back and we'll talk before you go into breakout. Okay, thank you. Great.
Okay, are people back from break? Let's see, yes, I think so. <laughs> so I would love it if we could go into breakout rooms for about, let's see, like 15 minutes and talk about what you learned from Laurel. So here are just a couple questions to think about. What's your typical approach to negotiation and how might you improve it based on today's talk? Or what's one negotiation skill you'd like to improve and how do you plan to work on it? I mean, this is just a guide. So if you wanna take a photo of these questions, I just like it for you to be able to talk about what you learned today, um, what you did before, if you have negotiated before and how you're gonna change it now or how you're gonna think about changing it. So I'm going to put you in breakout rooms until 10.45. Um, and you are in groups of either two or three people. Um, and let me open all the rooms. Does anyone have any questions before we go into the rooms? Okay, I'm going to open the rooms and you can get started talking about negotiating. Erica has to log off. Okay. Um, a few people have to log off. Okay, so we have got a number of people in each room and we'll meet back here at 1045. I'll see you then. I'll join some of the rooms. Hi, Maura. Hi there. Um, that didn't work. Apparently it booted me out of the room. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's see. Let me put you there again. I had you in room one. Oh, it was saying room six. <laughs> Let me see. Room six is zero. Uh, ah. Let me put you, see if I can do this. Okay. I'll put you in room five, see how that works.
Welcome back. I forgot to, to introduce Dianella. I, I know I put her in a, a in a room and I forgot to introduce her. Dianella is our um, intern for six, seven weeks and she's helping us uh, with success stories and she's learning. She, I don't know, Dianella, do you wanna tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, um, I'm a rising junior. I go to Boston University. I'm studying economics and data science and I'm really excited to be here at one, the, as an intern. Thank you so much. So I just wanted to end our session by talking about the next six month session. I put the application in the chat. I'll do it again. Um, thank you, breakout team. team. Oh, well, why don't we share? Yeah, did anyone learn anything in particular that you wanna share for the you know next couple minutes just to see what you learned about negotiating and what tips you're taking forward? I'll go super fast. First of all, I just want to shout out to Jolene <laughs> that like sometimes you're in an abundance phase and it's time to go back to thinking something might be a negotiating problem, which is actually you're in an awesome situation where you can start really narrowing the client base you want to work with and be way more selective and not deal with people who are trying to nickel and dime you. So I think, you know, sometimes looking at what's going on, it's not that we're failing to do something or not doing. It's like, oh, this is a signifier that it's time to revisit um, and revise. And it's it's like a next step forward. So um, I just wanted to highlight that some people are having so much success that that might be like where they're at and to make sure we look at it as abundance and not scarcity or a failure of any kind. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. I was I'm sharing sorry. that I was um, like, I felt like I, I don't negotiate and I didn't know if that was a good or bad thing, but um, which was some context uh, for dangerous comments um, that um you know, I'm very, at this point, because uh, I'm really slammed and kind of over capacity for work, if someone is trying to push back or nickel and dime me, I just walk away. I don't know that that will always be the case. Um, but so I just haven't found myself or people say it's too expensive, but won't say what works for them. And then I feel like I'm being asked to negotiate against myself, which I won't do. So, um, so yeah, so that led to the conversation more about like, being more selective about clients and projects and such. Oh, so. yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to say something. I didn't get to, uh, a chance to speak or action. Um, but I I actually uh, have, because of the work that I do, as you know, I'm an executive recruiter, negotiating is really um, par for the course. And... Um, I hope can everyone hear me because I'm I'm operating off of my phone. I have no clue. Um, it's yeah, um, I think I think it would be good. Um, I think learning to thrive in negotiating is really an important um, place to be. You know, as not only as an individual but as, especially as a business owner because I I know in my work I'm always preparing for that negotiating and. Um, you know, one of the uh, one approach that I take is to always be closing. Like it's you're 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 always thinking about how to close the deal, and that makes more sense in my world. But I think it is applicable, really, to any type of business structure that you're always trying to figure out how to close something, how to make something happen, and that is negotiating, and um. I think it's on how you approach it rather than fearing it, learning to thrive in it. Um, and I also, in our group, we talked about listening, or at least I emphasized how that was so, like listening to the asses, that was a very simple um, tool, but I think it's extremely powerful. 
And listening better does help in negotiating. It really does. So thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Alberta and then Stacy, you have your hands up. Uh, thank you. Um, I was in um Laurel and I were in a group together with um oh, with Daniela. Daniela. So yes, yeah. yeah, so we got to meet her first. But um we were talking about um, not only the negotiation piece of it where you are negotiating for price, but also um, some of what um, I've experienced, and I think Laurel as well, is you know making sure that the clients are right fit. So that's part of the negotiation process as well as trying to gather as much information um, on the front end to make sure that ethically and morally um, that the client is a good fit um, as well as their willingness to pay the rate um, that you feel is um, desirable for the work that you're doing. Um, because what I found is that when there is not that connection in the beginning, then either the client is trying to get you to do more work and not pay you for it. And then you feel taken advantage of um, or it ends up being more work than you anticipated, um, and then you didn't charge the right price. So um, kind of all of those things in the beginning have been so helpful in just asking the right questions and and taking the time to listen. Uh, Thank you. Yes, we want to make sure we trust one another before moving forward too quickly, right? Stacy, do you want to share? Absolutely. Thank you. I was in a group with Sunhi and with Laura. Thank you, team. Um, a couple of things that came up in our group um, is the idea that uh, we're not just negotiating finances. We're usually negotiating psychology, expectation, emotion, and all of those are abstract. And then it sort of plays out in this kind of concrete number. So there are so many different factors that are actually at play. Um, and then uh, Sunhi asked about um, I'd asked about any texts that were helpful, and I shared that I was reading. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of this one. Never, oops, never split the difference. Oh, you want to put that in the chat? Can you? I'll put it in the chat. Mm -hmm. Um, and it is absolutely about negotiating. And one of the quick tips that is in the book, he said the two best words in any negotiation are the words, that's right. And then you say that to either reinforce or to pivot or to invite. So um, yeah, yeah, thanks you all. And I'll put it in the chat, never split the difference. Okay. We have time for one more, does anyone? Laurel, I saw you come off mute or no? Did I, or no, maybe not. Okay. Okay, well then we will move forward here to discuss our next Solopreneur Mastermind series, which I'm hoping you all can join. Um, it is sponsored by Trust. We are covering six new topics. Uh, so we listened to what you had responded in a survey about what you wanted assistance with, and we're going to cover personal branding, grant writing, hiring and staff retention, customer feedback and market research, procurement, and then health and wellness. And it's kind of be going to be in that order. This is tentative, though. We may switch it up based on people that are involved and participating, what their needs are. But please, if you can join us, there is a little application URL code, but I put it in the chat too, if you'd like to join us. First come, first accepted. Um, you all, of course, I already know you are solopreneurs, so you would be accepted. Um, we are putting this out to the general, to our general email list, um, so we can grow the group a little bit. Um, we don't want it too much bigger, um, but the breakout sessions help to make it smaller. Does anyone have any recommendations on our next six month session? I have a quick question. Do you already have someone that would be conducting the personal branding? I do not. Okay, because I actually, I'll send you a recommendation uh, for someone that helped me with mine. Um, and she is Chicago based uh, oh, right. and brilliant. Lots of great energy and things like that. So fantastic, thank you. Hmm. And how about health, health and wellness? 
Um, I was going to lead that, but I am willing to, um, yeah, have someone else come in also. What about hiring and staff retention? <laughs> um, do we have someone? I don't know. See, we're dividing the sessions up next session, next uh, six months. I think that was Jesse's, Maura. Oh, that was Jesse's. Um, you can give a recommendation. I know Jesse knew someone in Milwaukee, but we're not sure if they can help out. So please okay. give us some suggestions. Deidre put a comment in the chat in regards to health and wellness. If we could please add healthcare benefits. Okay. So benefit packages for our benefit solopreneurs. Packages. Okay, yes. So I need an expert on that. Mm -hmm. Yes, oh, Deidre, we will, your... yeah, we'll, we'll touch base at the end of the week. Yes. Okay, so please join us. We would love to see you again. If we don't see you, please remember that we are always here for you. Um, and we can help you with scaling, with financial projections, with whether or not you want to get uh, certified. Um, we can help you with those discussions. And we're always happy to see people. So please come and visit us. Any questions? I've got a question. Okay. Um, I would like to go back and listen to one or two of the sessions that we had. Are they still live? I mean, can we still do that? Oh, that's a good question. You know what? <laughs> Some of them will have been deleted, but I know I've put a few on our, um, our YouTube channel. Okay. So if you go to, let me see if I could, 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 Felicitas, do you mind getting our YouTube channel? Link? Yes, uh, yes, I'll put the link in our chat. Because okay. I have saved a lot of them. I'm not sure I've saved all of them. Um, but if you go to our YouTube channel, there are a, a lot of topics that are okay. covered. Wonderful. Okay. okay. Thank you. Great. Sure. Okay. Thank you, Kathy. Good luck to you. And we broke the ice, discussed progress on our smart six month goal, discussed negotiations and discussed next steps. So homework is create a six month improvement goal if you're joining us for next session. Um, and if you overshot your last goal, make it a li little bit bigger. If you didn't meet your last goal, make it a little bit smaller or, or do what I, you had to do, learn from what you did last time. And then please apply for next session if it works for your schedule. And you don't have to come to all of them. We're happy to see people three times, four times, five times, six times. Okay, thank you so much. This has been so fun. Um, and we're looking for more grant funding. So, um, your answers to the survey will help us. We're always looking for more funding for next year. Okay. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Have a successful day. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. And I'm actually drafting the email uh, for the lady that I want to recommend to you now so that I won't forget. <laughs> hey, John, you are so sweet. Thank you for being so vibrant. Um, I don't know you like that in person, but like in here, you've been so encouraging. Um, oh, just like in your temperament and like- Thank you. you. So thank you for that, big time. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, so I see nice. it, sis. I see you coming through. No, oh, are, will you be in the next one too? Or? Uh, you know, I think I'll be able to drop in um, because this has been so, so, so yeah. just helpful and grounding and reminded me that it's possible, Maura. Like it is oh, possible. Good. Yeah, it is possible. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Tyshawn, will you? Will you? Yes, I'm. I'm gonna actually sign up. It's like so. Me too. Yeah, I'm excited. Fantastic. I'm excited. And then also, let's connect as well, just to, yeah. to stay connected. Absolutely, because you're in Chicago, yes? Yep, yep, so between Chicago and Milwaukee.
Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, Laura, for all of it. Sure. Thank yes. you for coming. Absolutely. Nice okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.